Hi, everyone. I'm John Allen Mollenhauer. My friends call me John Allen or by my initials Jam, and I hope you will too. I get the great privilege today of interviewing Lois Marchito Manzella. I hope I said that perfectly. Very close. <laughs> that's, that's like, a, that's like a, a label for a great brand, that name. So I get the great opportunity to introduce. Introduce, uh, to interview her over the next 15 minutes on saying goodbye to being a serial yeser. Why this is such a big uh, or such a, a, an interest topic point for me is Lois and I know each other uh, for about three or four months. We were talking about uh, what we were doing over the last eight weeks, and we happened to be on a conference call with each other where she was taking a command. And after that, and it's something that she did so naturally and so well, and everybody really admired her for that. So after the call, we had had a one-on-one, -on -one, and I said, wow, I said, Lois, you do such a great job just taking complete command of this call. And, you know, we talked about all kinds of things, and it got to a point where I said, hey, you know, did you ever have a question with being like a serial yeser? Because you just jump right on things. Now, I know a little bit about this. I happen to write a book called The Curse of the Capable. And the curse that capable people suffer from is pretty strong, meaning when you're so capable, you're able to just jump right on things. Isn't that true, Lois? Totally. Totally. It's like the, the one thing that you're it's it's a strength for for a lot of things, but it can also be a major weakness because it's hard. to. It gets to the point where you say yes so much that it's hard to say no. I, it's so true. Right. On one front, it's a big boon on a lot of other fronts. It's a bane. So as you as you can imagine, when we talked about the takeaways uh, from our short call here, um, what we're about to talk about is going to be able to save you a lot of time and energy. And it's also going to be help you uh, help you to be able to stay on mission and on point and on purpose in your life. And also being able to still say yes. I know you still say yes a lot, huh, Lois? I do. I do. Um, I'm not quite a serial yeser anymore. Um, and that's changed relatively recently, so, but we'll talk about that later. All right. So, so tell me a little bit about why or when you first realized that you were a serial yeser. So I guess, you know, that's a really good question. That probably goes back to not even, not quite to high school, but probably back to the beginning of college. And I, I think I realized that I I really loved saying yes because it made other people feel so good. And I feel like I am a nurturer by nature. Yeah. If you were to look at my disc personality type, I am an SI, um, where my I is my adaptive and my S, if you're familiar with it, is. Yeah. <clears throat> so for those of you that don't I'm know. Part supporter and part uh, influencer. Yeah, so supporter is like where I thrive the most, and I was I went I went into education. My mom said from a really young age, from when I was a little girl, and even in dance class at like three or four years old, I was always directing all of the other kids. So if somebody was going the wrong way, I'd go over and like pull them back and say, "Here, this is your spot," you know. So it was always something I feel like that nurturing part of me has always been something that just became obviously very natural. Right. Um, the and your influence. Now you're an influencer. You, you, have a, you have a strong voice and, and a lot of determination. And uh, from what I've noticed, you have a lot of clarity around uh, what you want and where things are going. Yeah, that took me a long time to figure out, obviously. Um, I'm not like right out of high school starting this company. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, it took me a little bit of a little bit of time to kind of put my big girl pants on, so to speak. But um, but yeah, I would say probably in college for sure. Got it. So did it ever at one point get bad where it was just consuming all of your time and you're like, hey, well, you know, my God, I'm caught up with all these projects. Like I'm saying, yes, all these people are so happy with me, but I'm not that happy doing this. Yeah, a couple of years ago, um, it came down to something that happened with my dad. He came down with um, with an, an a really aggressive type of cancer, and I found myself being feeling really fortunate that I had the ability, because I owned a company, to be able to spend a lot of time with him, help my mom with all the doctor's appointments, and 
and a lot of those things, but it took um it took a toll on me personally, where it's the point where <clears throat> Like I felt, I felt like I was neglecting my company. I was neglecting my team. I was um, neglecting my family because I was taking on way more than I could, I could really handle. And um, it came to the point where I needed to hire someone to help me through that. And um, she's been a major influence in my life. Uh, my future vision coach, Valerie. But I believe in coaching. Part of the reason why I have this company is because I believe in what we do. Um, for people from an exercise perspective, but I know that exercise isn't the only thing that people need, especially during this time right now. I mean, there's so many people struggling. Um, even not not only I know that you had COVID nineteen, um, and a lot of people don't have it, but the mental effects well, of I had it. I had it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you had it. Sorry, did I say that wrong? Um, past tense. No, John is fine now. Um, but the mental effects of this i feel like have been um really difficult for a lot of people oh, so, indeed. so yeah so that was kind of when i realized like wow this is affecting me in a negative way let me see you know that that was a few years ago um but i don't think it was until recently that i kind of stopped which is a whole nother story Got it. So right now you're at a place where you still say yes periodically. And I bet you're challenged by this. I was totally. Um, like, like the tendency to want to say yes to so many things. I can bob and weave. Oh, my God, I can get this done. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. yeah I, I, find, I find myself wanting to say yes because I'm a people pleaser. And it's really hard to say no. And my husband actually very recently, only a few weeks ago, actually said to me, Lo, I'm so proud of you for saying no, because there is a, another thing that happened with my dad. Um, you know, fast forward, he's cancer free, you know, doing really well. He, we, we, yeah, we snow seed a couple months ago in the winter. He helped me teach my kids how to ski. And, um, and then like out of the blue, he has a moderate stroke. And it was like, all of a sudden, like I felt the <clears throat> internal pressure. And this happened literally the same week that COVID ever, like shut everything down. So now we couldn't go to the hospital. We couldn't see him. We had no idea what was going on. It was utter, utter chaos. And I found myself putting myself in that same position that I was in three years ago when he was diagnosed with cancer. And I said to my brothers and I said to my mom, I can't, I, I will help with things that I can, but I can't do everything. Wow, I can't. You know, let me interject there just for a second, yeah. because I, this conversation is all coming back to me now. Yeah. That like, this is a critical time. Your father just had a stroke. Like that would have probably been like a completely acceptable trigger for you to want to go right into I can get this done. I'm going to take this over. I'm going to help out. I'm the nurturer. I'm going to influence the rest of my family. I got this. And you, keeping in mind, everyone, that COVID just hit. So this had a huge impact on your business, correct? Totally. You, you're, a mobile, you're a mobile fitness coach, and I believe you were making that whole transition for you and your team towards serving them virtually, serving all your clients virtually. So lots of transition. Dad's having a stroke. And you stopped in that moment and said, hey, wait a second. Here's what I can do. And I'm going to need the rest of you to do this, this, and this. How did they respond? That's so That's so um, great. That and, was you it, and was it hard for you? Oh, my God. It was so hard. I remember. And my brothers, if they watch this, they're going to go, oh, no, no, we you know. But I'm the one that lives close to my parents. I'm the one that usually... I help my parents all the time. I'm the girl in the family and the girl in, in I don't know, in any other, anybody else's culture, but in my culture, I'm brought up pretty much mostly Italian. My dad is Italian, so that's- the That's side. something you do. You, you, you do the taking care of. Yeah, that's almost expected. Yeah. Like a um, story. The girls in the family. So all of a sudden, it was like this shift that had to happen to, for me because I'm like, you know what? Guys, I can't. 
I can't. I can't take on any more. I'm dealing with the kids. John, I, ha I have twins that are in first grade. So they're home. My husband's home. He's working from home. I'm working from home. I have a team of 15 that need me. I have all my clients. I'm constantly on the phone. And now this happens. And I'm like, <laughs> I can't right, so do it anymore. Just stop and say, listen, all I can do is all I can do. And all right. I can do is enough. And, and by the way, for all of you listening, that's probably one of the, a, a third takeaway that you can add to this is that, you know, at some point, Lois, I'm sure you agree. That yeah. At some point, you're probably part of what helps you make this shift is the boiling up of all of these commitments that you've made and you stop and go, I can't even take care of myself, my right. body, my own life. And I, cause I've, I've outsourced myself to so many people. It, it did that kind of dynamic in the past and just recently even hit you? Not until recently, really. And I feel like for a lot of people, I'm sure many people can understand this, that it gets to the point where you become such a yeser mm -hmm. that when saying no, like people are like, hey, what the? No, I, who are you? What's wrong with you? You don't feel good from your body. And I think one of my brothers actually said that. Like, what? Like, what's wrong with you? Like, what do you mean you can't take this on too? You know? And I'm just like, I can't. <clears throat> I did what I could do, and and my husband was a great influencer for me to be able to give me my voice. And to help me, and my coach was really my, my well, not only do I have a, a future vision coach, Valerie, she's wonderful, um, but I also have a business coach, Chris. And between the two of them and my husband saying to me, you need to take a couple things down. Um, and, and I saying, okay, I really need to, do need to take a couple things down. It was like all of these internal people supporting me. I feel like that support was super, super helpful. And did you feel when you were going through that, like, you know, I'm this capable person. Surely I should just be able to say no. Of course. I mean, and did, that, did, that, did it hit you that way where you were thinking, God, I should be able to do this, but I need this whole support system to actually stop this helpful in many ways, but destructive pattern in my life. Did that, did that hit yeah. that hurt you? Oh, totally. Because it's almost as if, and I kind of was brought up the way, like the only person, like if you want it to be done right, you do it yourself. <laughs> yeah. And right is not always, and, and someone said this to me a long time ago, and I, I forget who said it, but they said, done is better than perfect. Mm. It's a very, very good principle to, to live by today because I mean, so much. Even, even if you are a perfectionist, there usually isn't enough time. I'm also to to a level of perfection before you have to move on to something else. Yeah. I'm also, a, a, I was also, I'm also a recovering perfectionist. Um, and I've always said throughout my whole working career that practice makes progress, but I've said that to other people and I don't live by that. I was like, well, Pat practice makes progress. Practice makes perfect. No, it doesn't. It makes progress. It's on your journey. And I had to learn to retrain my thought process on that. And not easy, um, but definitely no, necessary definitely. to take care of me more so I can take care of other people better. Like my children who are, you know, wonderful and <laughs> important. So... Well, you know, I, look, I'll be the first to say, you know, being a man, I know that a lot, uh, a lot of functions, I, I, I tip my hat. I know a lot of men do this. They tip their hat to women because you have this cultural story that, like you mentioned earlier, that says you can be doing all this stuff, A, and then B, you're naturally have a, a nurturing element to you. And then C, if you combine that with being highly capable, you know, the S on your chest is going to be like your, your, your default. And, uh, and then especially if you're running a business, you run a business on top of this, which is serving so many people. Yeah, we help a lot of, we help a lot of people. Um, and it, it's gotten to the point where I've been emailing people and saying, I need help. And that is, that just, it hurts. Like <laughs> it hurts to ask. It hurts for me to ask for referrals. It hurts to ask for, but when I ask, 
people are so willing to help me. And I think that that's something that I have to remember going forward through this forever is to remember that um, I think my major, what did I learn? I know, I know you're going to ask me anyway, so I might as well just go into it is, you know, to be honest with myself. And I heard, um, Valerie, my coach say to me, um, you know, you have like her coach, her mentor, Ty Kane said to her, like, you have to be brutally honest mm. with yourself and tactfully honest with others. You're 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 a hundred percent right about that. You know, and I'll say that again because brutally honest with yourself means hundred percent honesty all the time. And do you find do you find that especially in the early stages you have to be deliberate, like very deliberate, like 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 that. Turn this way, do it this way, like really focus because mm -hmm. it's it's not your default. Yeah, it's and, not. I mean, are, are you are you still going through that? I imagine you probably are since you're. I think you're, I will you're for a long time. Serial yes, sir. Yeah, I think I will for a long time, and I find myself in positions where somebody will say, "I need," and if I'm like, "Oh, I could teach you how to do that." Well, you know, I, I want I want the audience here to to really understand one thing. Part of why we're even talking today is uh, I won't get into all the details just for the sake of time, but we were on this conference call, if you remember, mm -hmm. and there was a big project being proposed. Yeah. And I myself, right, who, believe me, I I have, I could be the interviewee on this call and, <laughs> and deliver I know you can. messages. And yeah. um, I'm a little further down the no path. And, but in this particular call, I was saying, potentially saying yes to this big project and now role reversal here, you were in my gallery on Zoom to my lower right. And I remember you like going, oh, oh my God, I'm doing really like, well. no, did I to ask the question, you know, I have one, you know, question and I hope nobody gets upset. You're almost like, you know, coddling yourself for a little bit going, oh, are you really going to do this? But do we even want to do this project? Right. Do we have the time for it? And everybody in that gallery, you could see, it was almost like. Oh, so I had so many people reach out to me after that meeting and said, "Thank you, thank you, thank you." And I still think it's a good idea, just not right now. It is. It is a, <laughs> it's a, it's a great idea. It's a great idea, but it was not now. Especially that was like three weeks ago. When we were we're all transitioning our businesses. So many things are happening, and during this this eight now going on nine week COVID period, and uh, it was. I, I remember saying to myself when you said that, I was like, wow, she's so right. She is so right. Why am I saying yes to this? Have I taken stock of what's going on in my world right now? And all of a sudden I'm going to pull that on my plate? No. Yeah. 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 So, and, so it was, I, that's off to you. That was great. And I, I, I really love, John, that you were so forthcoming about saying, like, I, I wasn't right about that. And I think that that's part of the whole honesty piece that I was talking about is, being brutally honest with yourself to know what you can handle, what's realistic, what's time oriented. Is this getting me closer to my goals? And if it's not, then you have to say no, because if it's not re like, it goes back to the whole smart goal theory, right? Strategic, right. more realistic, time oriented. If it doesn't fit in that little box, in those little box and checks off all the little things, then it's like, it's not a have to, it's a, want to and changing it from a need and to a want or a want into a need like if it's not a need it can go so what let me ask you this i know we're running out of time here but i, I really we're almost know. at the 20 minute mark just oh we're almost at the 20 minute mark okay i'm just gonna ask you all day, I'm sure right. we have people watching so that's good if you right. like this comment share yes yeah. yeah, so if you have a question fire away listen yeah. What, what what is the barometer like how do you know so we could talk about smart goals and talk about the psychology of it all and all that kind of great yeah. stuff but, but do you get like a like a feeling in the pit of your stomach where you go oh this is not right like do you feel something when you when you're gonna now go hey i'm gonna stop i'm gonna back off i may potentially say no to this i'm not gonna say yes what is it for you um i go into i there's a lot of things, right? There's a lot of different factors. I think it's just looking internally to yourself and 
really all the answers we need are in us if we're just willing to listen. Yes, yes, yes. Well, listen, on that gallery, back to our conference call, when you, we, you know, that whole scenario I just painted out, I could see it in your facial expression. You're like, yeah, my eyes get like really big, like, oh, no. yeah, this looks good. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Not yeah. sure about this yet. Yeah. But so, so you, your body gives you a response. Totally does. Thumbs up this whole complex situation. And you know, if you should be getting into this, if this is the right time, et cetera. It's like your brain's making these calculations all in one shot. We just have to listen, right? Right. And I think that goes into all things health, right? It's, and you know this from what, you, you know, you're, you're an influencer when it comes to being in the health industry, but when it comes to eating well, we feel better when we eat well. We, we have more energy. We sleep better. If we're sleeping well, we feel better. If we're in control and being honest with our family members and our friends and taking on what we can actually handle, things get better. Um, all of all of those things that we propose on a day to day will get better if we allow them to. Right. Um, I think that we we can make major changes in what we want our future to look like if we go to that future and see what it looks like and focus on that and drive our drive that future forward. You know, one step in the present, but one step in the future. What do you want to gain out of this life? Because, you know, and how do you want to feel? Because, I mean, the whole reason why I think we were put here as human, as a human race, not to get super philosophical, we could go there too, I'm sure. Yeah. But I think the reason, and I keep reminding myself of this, is to have fun. Everything should be about having fun. A a absolutely. I, I think that that is a major element. And I, I bet you bring a lot of that to your clients. And I just want to, you know, uh, acknowledge that I think it's, not only are you great as a fitness professional, but I think it's great that you bring, um, that you're having these kinds of dialogues, uh, willing to open yourself up through interview, and uh, that you bring a, like a strong coaching background to fitness relationships. Because, I mean, we all know you get tired. Yeah. You, know, you get, um, there's other things going on in your life. Uh, you have other stresses. Now, you know, we, 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 you, especially as a fitness professional, because it's so much energy output. Oh, totally. Uh, and also much change. You've got to bring so much more to that relationship. And I know that you do that. I think that's great. Yeah. And I, I can appreciate that. I'm a performance lifestyle coach. I, I, I go through all the different aspects of lifestyle and, you know, talking to you um, has really been insightful. I, I mean, I've really enjoyed this whole interview. I mean, I, this, this interview was, yeah. I hope this interview was as good for you as it was for me. <laughs> I, I, I definitely think it was. We got some, we have some really good feedback and I, I, I appreciate you taking the time to want to talk about this topic. I feel like it's important for a lot of people to know what they can, that they can make their life better just by making kind of a couple minor adjustments. A absolutely. And, uh, you know, to, to close this out, um, as your host on, <laughs> on Lois's channel, <laughs> I'm taking command of this channel right now. All right. So um, think really seriously about these takeaways, about how much more energy you can gain and time you can, can you can gain by not being a serial yeser. We Everyone acknowledges we want to say yes to other people. Right. We want to make other people feel good. We, we may even want to challenge ourselves and do it for our own self-interest, but you've got to be really careful. I think we all agree, right, Lois? Yeah, totally. As her between this is looking. I'm looking over here because I know that her right is my left or vice versa. <laughs> um, <laughs> for those of you watching, I'm staring at a black screen. You think I'm staring at her? No, she's over there. <laughs> I'm staring at this black screen and she's over there and I want to go, ah, no, ah. Okay. So, so really pay attention to the, to the impact that it's going to have on you. And the second takeaway that we said we were going to deliver on was that if you want to stay on purpose, you want to stay on mission, et cetera, a lot of times it's easier to focus on other people's issues than your own. And that, cause that's where a lot of the hard work is. So it's easier to say yes to somebody else's problems. Be really careful about that. And then uh, any final thoughts by you, Lois? I just, I, I think this was really fun. Thank you so much for having me. Please, those of you that are watching out there, comment, share it, tell people that we exist. We appreciate you and you watching you, if any of you have any questions or or suffer from this reach out to lois or reach out to me we look forward to working with you or helping you 
All right. Have Thank a great you. Day, everyone. Have a great one. Take care. Yeah.